Hello, this is Nathan from Soundscape Hearing Aids, and uh, what I want to do is show you how we fit a pair of hearing aids. Everybody's ears are a little bit different, so the shape of your ear, the acoustics of your ear, and the way that hearing aid fits in your ear is going to be very different than anybody else's. And so what it is actually amplifying is going to be a little bit different in your ear than anybody else's. We want to make sure it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So I'm going to show you that process. We start with our real ear measurement. We use these little tubes that go into your ears and they measure, it's like putting a microphone down in your ear, they measure what's going on in your ear. So first thing we gotta do is calibrate the tubes. Then we put the tubes in your ear and we've got to see what what's it sound like in your ear when you're not wearing hearing aids okay okay so if the tubes are at the right depth we'll have this shape to it where we have this peak and then it drops off like that you'll notice that even without hearing aids this area right here from about 1500 to 4000 the volume is boosted there the acoustics of the ear naturally amplify this area of sound an interesting little fact is that that is the tone of bird song and uh, birds happen to be a very good indication that there is water and plants nearby so if you're out in the woods and you hear birds you know that you're in a a good area of the woods a safe area with some water with some food so um just a little little tidbit little uh little bit of trivia there okay um now i'm going to put the hearing aids on a little more difficult to do to yourself than to uh, somebody else. Now that the hearing aid is in, that tube is on the other side of the hearing aid and measuring what's coming out of the hearing aid. So measuring what's actually being amplified in my ear. <clears throat> now, one of the things I want to show you here is acoustics. So. Depending on a person's hearing loss, um, we're going to change that little rubber dome that goes on the inner into the ear. We can make it an open dome, a base dome with some venting, a base dome with less venting. Now, the reason why it's called a base dome is um, if you have a completely open open fitting, even if the hearing aid is is producing a lot of bass sounds, uh, those escape out of the ear and you don't actually hear them. It doesn't matter that the hearing aid is making the sounds. Uh, you're not going to hear that amplification. So um, by putting in a, a dome that's a little more closed, keeps some of those bass sounds in the hearing aid so you can actually hear them. So depending on what your hearing loss is and what we're trying to actually amplify and what we're trying to actually accomplish, that affects what kind of dome we use. Also, the size of your ear is going to affect what dome we use. But what we're trying to amplify, what tones we're trying to amplify, is going to affect the, um, uh, the, the dome we use. In older hearing aids, we'd have to plug up the ear more just to prevent the feedback. Most hearing aids are, are very good at just preventing feedback on their own. And we don't have to plug up the ear uh, or use those big ear molds just to prevent feedback. Nowadays, when we are choosing what kind of dome size we're using or if we're choosing to use ear molds, it has more than anything to do with what are we trying to amplify? What tones are we trying to amplify? And if we need a lot of bass, then we need, uh, especially like a person with a profound hearing loss, and we need a lot of bass amplification, then we need an ear mold. If we need a little bit of bass amplification, then we need a closed dome. Or what we have here, a bass dome, what's called double, which means has two vents rather than one vent. So they're still venting in the dome. Uh, it's not plugging your ear up completely. You're not going to feel like your head's plugged up, but it gives us a little bit more bass and we can get a little bit more um, of the mid-range as well. 
also allows us to uh, have more control over background noise and that's a big complaint people have is they're having trouble with background noise and by having a little bit more of just an open if we don't just have an open dome we have a little bit of a, of a, a closed dome um, then we can block out some of those background sounds and the hearing aid can actually deal with them better and adjust to them and minimize the background sounds better. Okay, but I've got open domes on the hearing aids right now. Okay, so I just told the hearing aids to fit to target. That target is based upon what I've told uh, or what I've said is my hearing loss. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn the hearing aids off and I do have open domes so even with the hearing aids in my ears with the hearing aids off it's just going to it's going to be as if I have nothing in my ears so we'll see what happens um, when the hearing aids are turned off Okay. And then we'll turn the hearing aids on. Okay. Now then we see the difference. Okay, we see at these lower frequencies there is no difference between the amplification with the hearing aid on or off. But we get to these mid frequencies, that's where we see this difference. Here's off, here's on. Okay, no difference. Hearing aid off, hearing aid on. There's a big difference there. Okay, with the hearing aid off, there's 60 decibels, hearing aid on. Now that sound is getting amplified to 80 decibels. Not quite 80, but almost 80. That's a really big difference. Nearly 20 decibels in amplification. That is a very significant difference in amplification. Okay, one more thing I want to show you is what's called speech mapping. So here we can actually record live what the hearing aids are doing. How are they amplifying? Okay, so we're seeing my voice and how it's being amplified. You can see that right here on the left side is not amplifying these high frequencies as much as it is on the right side. Okay, so um, if I wanted to, I could then specifically turn up this area here on that left hearing aid. So what's really valuable about this is if you have somebody specifically you're having trouble hearing, say your husband or your wife, uh, we can measure their voice and see how their voice is being amplified. Um, or if there's some environmental sound that you're having trouble hearing, we can actually measure exactly what tone is that is that sound. Where is it at? Is it 1000 hertz? Is it 4000 hertz? And then we can see, well, how is the hearing aid amplifying at that tone? And if it's not quite what it needs to be, well then we can turn it up specifically for that spot and actually make sure it's amplifying what you need it to amplify at the tone you need to, it to amplify. Real ear measurement is an uh, objective starting point. Okay, It's not the end, it's not where we finish. It just gives us an idea that the hearing aids are actually working they're actually amplifying sound, they're actually doing what they're supposed to be doing, and very importantly, they're not over amplifying sound. That's just as important as not under amplifying sound, but it's a starting point. Everybody perceives, everybody understands their brain processes sound differently, and therefore how, how sound, uh, how it sounds to you, how you understand it, what is comfortable, what is clear to you is going to be different than anybody else. Um, we have different preferences of, of how sound sounds. And therefore, we don't just fit objective real air measurement to target and say, that's it, live with it. We're then going to listen to you and we're going to adjust the hearing aids 
to your preferences, to your perception, to your subjective feeling of how they sound. Okay, so we're gonna ha we have to listen to you. We can't just run tests and say that's that. We have to listen to you, and we have to fine tune the hearing aids. After we do the real air measurement, we still have to fine tune the hearing aids to you based upon your real world experience. So real air measurement is very important, but it's just a starting point.